there has got to be a way to do this. And if Apple actually cared about the environment, the way that they posture that they do, then they would solve it. Like, let's, let's be real here. Their R&D budget has enough room in it. If they were legitimately motivated to deal with this problem, that they could find a solution. And it's one of those things where I, I realize I'm coming in here just kind of going, yeah, here's a problem. Uh, see you later. Like, I, I, don't, I don't have the perfect solution. But I also am sh not the one who should have to. Like, I'm not the one who is manufacturing mountains of e-waste that do not need to be shredded. I'm not the one saying, oh, I just care so huggy-muggy much about the environment that we, I make the greenest devices ever. That's you. <laughs> That's you. That's you. You're the one doing that. It's Apple's hypocrisy that bothers me so much about them. I saw, I saw a comment on, um, on a Floatplane exclusive recently that was uh, Jonathan Horst reacting to something or other from Apple, uh, like their new announcement of something. And it was like, you know... You've corrupted him. The longer he works there, the more he sounds like a, like a cynical, like, non-Mac person. Uh -huh. I'll, t I'll tell you something about Jonathan Horst. So he was hired because he is analytical and maybe a little cynical, um, but still loves Apple. That was exactly... That was exactly who we were looking for for a role like that because we didn't want to be like every other Apple channel where we just go, oh, yes, yes, please, please just ah, put it in my mouth. Nah, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> right? Like we wanted, to, we wanted to love Apple, but not in like a super submissive kind of way. We're sure. not talking Fifty Shades here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're talking like a healthy relationship. Fifty Shades of Space Gray. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Thanks. Best line of the WAN show right there. I'm gonna try to top that, but I'm a fail. <laughs>